let's quickly go on the phone and speak to John in Deburi. He is a lawyer and needs no introduction in this country. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Ndebugri. Yeah. Right. Um, hello, hello, Mr. Ndebugri. If you can, if you can, if if you can put off the radio set by you or the television you are watching, it will help because the the the, the sound is delayed. Oh, there's another program somewhere. Thank you. Uh, in the Bulgari. Yeah, the, the transmission is delayed, so we need you to put off your radio or the television that you are listening to. Let's get our. Oh, let's get our. All, all right. Right. Thank, all, right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Good to have you. Um, uh, good morning to all my good friends there. Right. <laughs> In <right>. the boogery. <laughs> okay. Now, um, how closely have you known Martin Amidu? And what do you say about uh, this announcement for him, him to take the special prosecutor job? Oh, you want me to give a testimonial from Martin Amidu? <laughs> yes. I, I, I am not about to know that. I, I have known Martin Amidu. Martin Amidu was born in Boku. I mean, he spent his useful days at Boku, at Dadu, a, a section of Boku called Daduri. Uh, we went to school in the upper, former upper region, now upper east region. Partly he spent in the northern region. I spent all of it in the upper region. Uh, politically, he served as my no, first of all, I appointed him as chairman of a, a commission of inquiry in Somali uh, to investigate uh, <coughs> cotton, cotton, the cotton company. Then I, later on, he became my deputy when I was the secretary for the upper region and later on the upper east region. Mm -hmm. After I left become secretary for our Greek, he acted as the regional secretary, and so on and so on. So we've known each other for quite some time. Mm. He knows me very well, and I know him very well. OK. Um, within, within the locality, and I, I'm sure part of this country, um, is he as difficult as you are known to be yourself? <laughs> oh, I don't know that I'm so difficult. Mm. <laughs> But if it is that you will stand, if if you think that you stand by your principles, and you are not, you don't allow yourself to be compromised by material matters. I think Martin and I uh, can be put on the same scale. I concur. Okay, Pekubaku says he, he agrees. But people right. are saying. Uh, thank you very much. Right. Peku knows me also very well. So. Right. And and I'm sure there are people. If you are if you are speaking from Baku and uh, the no, upper, I'm, I'm in Accra here. Right. People are listening from the upper region, and of course they they remember what the name in day evokes. And uh, <laughs> some 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 years ago, particularly, <laughs> and and I'm sure you're right about it. A lot of discipline. But people say there's a danger in that. And that is why, particularly, some people within the NPP didn't like this idea or don't like this idea. Which, which idea? The idea of having Martin Amidu as a special prosecutor. Yeah, that's the problem I have with the whole hula baloo about this special prosecutor. Uh, I think uh, Honorable uh, Afeyo Martin pointed it out briefly. The man is prosecutor. Forget about the word special. He has been prosecutor before. As a deputy attorney general, he prosecuted many cases which he lost. When he takes, a, just for the sake of argument, Honorable Asenio Martin to court that he is corrupt, and he comes to instruct me, and I come to represent uh, Honorable Asenio Martin, we will be equal, pari before the court. So uh, there's nothing really about it. He's not a judge. So he cannot grab people and just put them in prison. He's going to investigate, and he's going to charge people, and then lawyers will come and defend those people, and everybody will have their day in court. 
So I don't see there is nothing really significant about this uh, special prosecutor, except that, as far as I'm concerned, it's a retrograde step. How do you mean? How do we mean? Look, the Attorney General has been mandated by the Constitution, by Article 88, to be an office, be not an office, an individual with a discretion to prosecute or not to prosecute. This time, this one is an office. The mandate that has been given by the Attorney General has not been given to the special prosecutor. It has been given to the Office of Special Prosecutor, which is a company, a corporate body, with a board of directors. So the, president, the special prosecutor is merely the managing director of that company. Mm. And the, 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 the law says clearly that he is accountable to the board. What is the meaning of that? If he is accountable for the, to the board, and go and look at the functions of the board. They are to do the policy. They are to do all sorts of things. I don't know about, I have not had the time to do research on the other jurisdictions where we have a special prosecutor, like in South Africa. <coughs> but where you have refused the ability to take a decision as to whether to prosecute or not to prosecute, from an individual to a, a company, and then you appoint somebody as the managing director of that company. You, you are not advancing, and you are not advancing the fight well, against well, corruption. Well, well some, some, will, some will argue that, that there's, there's actually, practically, in practice, there's no difference in what, uh, what you are trying to distinguish from the holder of that office, the special prosecutor, and the office itself. Um, but it, this, is, this is an area we have traversed. We've no, gone beyond that now. The now we have the act. Yeah, okay. Now we have the act, and, and we have someone nominated who is going to be uh, in charge of that. But don't you agree? I have the act, I have the act before me. Right. Don't you agree, though, that the caliber of a prosecutor is important for the prosecution? No. That is the problem. That is the problem people are talking about. See. What is going to happen is that there is at once a conflict situation. The mandate has been given to the office. And some functions have been given to the special prosecutor. Mm. There is a, a subsection which claims that, notwithstanding the fact that the mandate has, that the prosecutor, special prosecutor is accountable to the board, he, he has full control over blah, 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 blah. It, 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 it's a conflict situation. The board is going to insist on its authority. And the special prosecutor is going to insist on, on his independence. And knowing the person who has been nominated, the first few cases will have problems. I can predict. And then Martin will simply walk out, and then we will go back to square one. That, that is the danger. You even look through the, the act. There are so many contradictions. Okay. The, uh, the, the long title starts with the fact that the prosecution is to be done on the authority of the attorney general. All right. Attorney general has given that mandate mm. not to the special prosecutor but to the office mm. and the office as a board the members of whom have been uh, to be appointed by the president and so on and even there's a deputy prosecutor the constitution does not provi make provision for a deputy attorney general mm. this time there's a deputy prosecutor mm. and then he will be appointed depends on the nature of that person okay and the conflict situations are many, but you you took me off too quickly. Let me pause and congratulate Martin for the appointment because it is a recognition of the work he and I have done over the years. Because we work in collaboration, I'm in consultation with him quite uh, often. So I congratulate him for it. But he knows what has happened in all these years that we have been participating in mm. the politics and the whatever in this country. Okay. So I pray for him. Right. Maybe he should try and see how far he can go with the whole process. But the contradictions are very clear. And right. I think that um, I, I'd like you to leave on the note of telling us what your expectations are of him. I have said so. 
I have said that Martin is going to stand on his feet, he unshakably. And you have predicted that he will walk out of that office. <laughs> I am mm. very sure of that. Okay. Unless he has changed overnight. Mm. And that if he insists on that, these conflict situations I have tried to point out may lead to something else. You know, let me just end by saying that once upon a time, another stubborn person was called by the President of the Republic and advised that, look, even the circumstances resign. He went on radio and said, I won't resign. He was sacked. Subsequently, he was put in prison. I don't intend to, to, to predict that that is going to happen. But, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to say certain okay. things that will be misinterpreted. But the point is that some types of persons are considered to be stubborn, as you said at the beginning of your interview with me. Mm. And the stubbornness is connected with standing on your principle. If you think that something is wrong, it's wrong. It doesn't matter who says it is right. All right. So I pray that Martin will, you know, take things in his stride and make sure that this office works. Okay. If other people make it possible for him to make the office work. Thank you very much indeed. John Indebugri is a private legal practitioner. Um, for now, um, he's been many other things before uh, this uh, focused life in, in the law.